Hello, lovelies. This is Jennifer Hall, and you are with me today at the Lessons from the Universe podcast. I'm excited to share my message with you today, as always, and I look forward to seeing where it takes us along our path to awakening. If you have questions or comments, show ideas, feel free to email the podcast. The email is jen at psychicjenniferhall.com. That is jen with two n's at psychicjenniferhall.com. If you love today's podcast, please subscribe, share it, like it, or review, and help us grow our audience so that we can get more people than ever on the path to their something better. Here we go. The world is this really weird combination of what is for us and what is not for us. Hmm. I had this sentence running through my head last night over and over again. Um, I wasn't sure (laughs) what to do with it. So I finally wrote it down. And once I wrote it down, you know, ink to paper, which side note is very beneficial to the brain, it revealed layers to me. And I realized um, it started because I was thinking about all the things we take so personally that we think are about us or for us, the things that we hear or see that we think are about our relationship or they make us fear what other people are thinking, right? Maybe we think it's what we should think or maybe we think it's what someone else is thinking. And these are kind of arbitrary things in life, right? Perhaps it's what we've seen on TV or what's going on in a friend's relationship or a friend's world or what somebody tells us so adamantly that is their belief. And sometimes it's even presented like, of course, everybody thinks this. Or in this case, it was a comedian. Um, I saw a comedian Saturday night. And, um, man, he was funny, (laughs) right? Um, So this thought led me down this rabbit hole of how self-centered we can all be, right? I mean, that and how little faith sometimes we have in others. And, um, you know, for that matter of fact, perhaps our circumstances, um, our lives, our relationships, I can say, you know, that it almost felt hypocritical for a minute, right? Because I say all the time that everything has a purpose, something to teach us, and it does. But it's to teach us, only us, each individual. And the second that we try to impose that upon somebody else, we fail. I mean, it might be a completely different experience for them. So... I'm listening to this comedian at Hyenas. Um, For those of you who are local, it's fun. Um, It was just the other night. And he's talking about why he chooses to be single. And they are really valid reasons. (laughs) Okay? He's not slamming marriage at all. Uh, Mostly he's just funny. And, you know, these are true things. These are things that we happen to give up in order to be in a relationship right? The partnership pieces, the checking with each other before we spend too much money kind of things, right? Not fidelity. (laughs) Um, So I'm listening to him and I'm enjoying him and I'm watching this couple across the way start to get really uncomfortable. You know, now they're, well, not that young, but um, well, the details of... (laughs) of their appearance and things don't matter. What I can say is that she is getting increasingly drunk and increasingly angry. Angry at the comedian and angry at her date. And what she's revealing, though, is fear. Fear that this guy that she's sitting with will never want to commit to her. Um, maybe the fear that no one will. And the energy and the interaction starts to get messy. And he actually got up and left and then she tried to buddy buddy with these two girls sitting with her that clearly were not on the same page as her and she ended up getting and leaving and they were out the door before the set was over my personal thought um was wow (laughs) right I mean so because it's all for us and we shouldn't be judging other people I start to think okay so What am I supposed to get from this, right? Would my reaction to this comedian be the same if I had been sitting next to my husband? And my 
brain doesn't even want to go there. My brain starts thinking about what's for me. I'm going to call that good training, (laughs) right? And what I'm realizing is that I'm thinking about the freedoms that my husband gives up. And this is interesting because I tried again to make it just about me and I couldn't because giving up those things is natural to me. It's worth it in order to be in a partnership, in a relationship. And so where I go is that it's worth it to him too. And I I know it is. And I'm so grateful that my mind takes this turn because listening to that guy and how he's presenting this as, as facts, right? It would be very easy for someone to let themselves go down a rabbit hole of my man must feel this way too, or my woman for that matter, right? The things that we give up, the things that he gives up, right? Compromise on what we watch on television, um, the temperature of the air conditioner, (laughs) things like that. The little stuff that makes up life, that part was for me, right? That part was for me. To think about being more patient, but also don't assume, right? Because as I watched that couple come apart at the seams, I did ask myself, would I be reacting differently if Lucas was beside me instead of my best friend? Would I be imposing this on him, assuming that because this comedian feels this way, all men do? How small-minded would that be? And how much little faith would that give in this man that I have known for most of my life? How small. The message that marriage sucks was not for me. Marriage doesn't suck. People suck sometimes. (laughs) And sometimes it's actually not them that suck. Sometimes it's our own sucky attitudes. (laughs) You know, we fall down these plethora of wormholes or we have the ability to right? The outside world brings our fears up into our faces. We can hear about the homeless elderly man who once had a great career and we can say, oh God, that's for me. And we can become afraid. That's fucked up. People get paralyzed by that. Some will use that fear as motivation to work really hard and save money. And that's fantastic, right? Be motivated for the positive if you can. But the reality is we should first deny that as being for us, right? Not everything is for us. Say, that's not for me. That's not for me. And then affirm the truth. Say, I am prosperous. I recognize opportunity and I trust the unfolding of my best life right now. That, that is the what do I learn? How do I grow thing that should come out of everything else? I found in me the optimal affirmation for overcoming my fear and creating the life I truly want. That's what we should be looking for. What did I learn? How did I grow? I found the affirmation I needed. I need to affirm that my partnership is strong. I need to affirm that my financial situation is good or growing or whatever. I need to affirm my health. Not I need to fall down some rabbit hole of fear. Not I need to assume this is a prediction. No. Use it to find what you need to deny from your life. Say that is not for me. Only we can be responsible for our reactions to things. That young woman at the comedy show wanted her date to take responsibility for the fear that rose in her as he laughed at the comedian's jokes. But that fear and insecurity were only hers. The comedian was male, but he could have just as easily made a male insecure that his partner wanted the freedoms he was discussing. 
He wasn't the voice of every man in the room or of every relationship in the room. He was just a dude telling jokes, revealing his thoughts and feelings. And this guy in particular wasn't even trying to persuade anyone. He was a really positive guy. I actually liked that because the self-loathing from most comedians is, you know, palpable. It wasn't about me. It wasn't about my husband. It wasn't about that sweet girl or her clueless boyfriend. So why do we take it so personally? Why do we overlay it upon our lives? Why do we become so self-centered and so serious? And why? Why do we think that we need to know everyone else's stuff, everyone else's reactions and perceptions to a thing? We can't. We don't. And yet we assume so much. Why? Why is she assuming that because he's laughing, he wants to be single forever? <laughs> that's, that's not even fair. That's not even fair. That's that not what was going on in his mind. In fact, you know, from the look on this guy's face, he was just zoned out. They'd been drinking, all of that, right? Not everything is for you or me or anyone else, right? It can be funny. It can be scary. It can be sad, whatever, but it's not for you, right? I'm thinking about my daughter when she sees something, um, about families, right? She's, man, she's tough as nails. Not much scares her. But when it's something that hurts a family, right? She gets very emotional. And I remind her the same thing. It's not for you, baby. It's not a prediction. It's not for you. It will never happen here. And so what does she do? She says, this is not for me. And she affirms, my family is safe. My family is love. And she feels better. Hmm. We need to trust that others cannot easily be swayed from who they are. If they've showed us that they can be, we need to seriously think about releasing that person. Because integrity is huge, right? But for the most part, people with any kind of intelligence and, you know, barring substance abuse, really, they can't be swayed so easily. They can't hear some successful comedian talk about why being single is better than being married and decide all of a sudden out of nowhere they want to be single too or anything else for that matter. We need to trust that other people are self-aware enough to learn, to hear the subtle messages. It's not for us to impose on them unless they ask, right? If they ask, what did you think about that? How did that make you feel? (laughs) What is the link to your podcast? (laughs) Then, yeah, we can tell them, right? But we need to quit making every single thing a teachable moment. There are times we should let it be a teachable moment. Okay, don't get me wrong. If there's something that needs to come up in a relationship or of any kind of relationship, you know, I know people go directly to love relationships or romantic love relationships, but but every kind of relationship. Sometimes there are things we need to discuss and, you know, an open door is a good opportunity to grab the moment, right? But not every single time. Most of the time it's just personal. It's just for us, Right? A younger me would have wanted to discuss this guy's jokes (laughs) with my husband to hear him tell me that he doesn't feel that way, right? I mean, insert any comedian, TV show, client story, friend on Facebook, whatever, right? When things come up in us, sometimes we want someone else to take them away. That's not great (laughs) because it rarely ever works right? Sometimes they can. But most of the time, people have their own things going on, and that becomes a threat to them, right? Now, I see that if I'm fearful or, you know, quote unquote, curious what you think about it, that's on me. And it's likely to make Lucas or anyone else feel 
insecure, disrespected, or whatever else. It says, I don't know you. I don't trust you. I don't believe you're not that guy. (laughs) Do you understand what I'm saying? Not everything is for you. Not everything is designed to give you a teachable moment or to dig holes in your thoughts or emotions. Don't go there. Okay, a teachable moment for yourself, sure, yes, right? Maybe it's just enjoy and laugh and quit letting your thoughts go places. Maybe it's a chance to practice just being present. Maybe it's a chance to uncover an old fear you thought you'd dealt with and to to deny it and to affirm the truth. After all, guys, we live in a world full of other people. It's required, right? It's what makes the education. And so we do have to remind ourselves, right, when we start to go down some rabbit hole that's not our own reality, that it's not for us. We can choose and we should. Right? Say, oh, that's interesting, but that's not for me. And focus on what is for you. Affirm it and smile at it and rest in it. We need to train our minds, which ultimately trains our brains. Right? That's science. We train our minds and our brains to see what is for us. Instead of what is not to see what is light and ease and joy and success for us individually. It's different for different people. We need to avoid gross generalizations. You know, we fall down these holes of our thinking. A lot of times, We have recognized that they're not useful or real or that they come from our past. And so we've laid, you know, leaves and sticks and (laughs) stuff over the hole to cover it up, right? They call this spiritual bypass. I'm just going to cover it up and I'm going to keep going. The problem with that is the holes are still there and we can fall down them, okay? And this happens sometimes when we're, well, observing the world around us, listening to some comedian, whatever. The holes reveal themselves and we go right through the sticks, right? Okay. If you can't just hop right out of the hole, then you need to figure it out. You need to explore it. You need to name it. You need to track down its origin and fill it up thought by thought with the truth. Say, oh shit, I'm down this thought hole. This is my fear of infidelity or my fear of being alone, my fear of being broke, my fear of being sick, whatever it is. Okay, I'm down the hole. What do I fill it with? This hole is not real. Step one, deny it. Step two, what do I fill it with? With the truth. With the truth. Right? You have facts that tell you it's not real. And you cannot tell me that you don't. You know, I've just recently, I was talking to a woman about relationships and she was saying, you know, she has nothing to go on that says relationships that are healthy at all are for her. Bullshit. I told her to name everybody that she knew that had a relationship that she would like to emulate. Because guess what those are? Evidence it exists. And she shoveled that in. (laughs) right every quality that makes her a good partner and she shoveled that in there are always things to fill the hole it's true and so we fill the hole in our thinking and then we challenge it we dance right across the top (laughs) right across the top this is not true for me right Perhaps we have to act in faith at first. But don't just go down some thought hole. Fill it up thought by thought. If it takes a while, fine. If you walk across the top and it sinks down, the soil gets compacted. (laughs) 
you know, shovel some more truth in there. If you can't find the specific things that fill it up, then you come up with more general, you know, more general information, more general affirmations. Life is for me. Love is for me. I am safe. I am safe. That's the most powerful affirmation there is. It's so layered. I used that one continuously for a long, long time. I am safe. Remember, the whole is for you, not the rest of it, right? That comedian revealed to that young woman what her thought holes were for her, not for somebody else. But it's easier to fight the war outside than inside. And so she tried to impose that on him instead of look in for what are my own thought holes. Don't make that mistake, my lovelies. Or, you know, you will make that mistake, but catch yourself when you do. This is not for me. This is not my truth. This is not my world or my future. This is someone else's experiences. It is not mine. I deny it. And then we affirm what is. I am love. I am light. I am peace. All good things come to me. And remember, it's aligned with your faith, beloved. And if you have trouble believing, it means do it more. Do it more. Do it the entire drive to work. Do it the entire time while you're trying to fall asleep. You affirm it again and again and again until you believe it. And then you put your stamp on it and you say, and so it is. Here it is. It is mine. Open your hands, beloved. Say, it is done. (laughs) It is done. Say, amen. Amen basically means, and so it is. All good things come rushing to me as quickly as I may receive them. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. That's from Psalms. (laughs) You know, every religion, every faith, other than sheer pessimism, (laughs) affirms that the thing that we focus on becomes our reality. I meet a lot of very successful people. And one thing they all have in common is that they created a vision and they kept their mind centered on it. Every single one used affirmations, some with and others without even knowing it. Many made vision boards and lists, some by being taught and others by sheer intuition. It is what we allow ourselves to focus on, my lovelies. And that comes back to the comedians or the books or the neighbors or whoever, right? Deny what brings up your fear. That is not for me. And affirm your truth. Trust the people that you love until you have reason not to. Don't make assumptions. Fill up those thought holes and be strong and triumphant. Don't fear loss because loss makes room for new things. Just be focused on being the best you you can be. Don't put the power for your peace, your fear, your joy, or your anything else 
in the hands of someone else. And if you've already done that, just gently reach in and take it back. It is yours after all. Because the most sacred love, the most sacred marriage, the most sacred connection is the self to the self. And when that is pure and good, everything else falls into place. Until next time, beloved. Namaste. Thank each and every one of you for joining me today for this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to spend with me. If you haven't already found me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, come and find me there and join the conversation. My Facebook family is growing and we want you there with us. If you are inspired by the podcast, please consider clicking the green patron button. Not only will your support help keep us going and growing, but also coming very soon, there will be some patron-only content saved just for those of you that choose to help keep us on the air. If you haven't received word, maybe you haven't been following on social media, I am also offering some educational sessions for people inspired by the podcast that would like to learn and know more. You can find detailed information about that in the About section on my Facebook page. I want to send you each light and love, clarity and wisdom. I know always that whether you realize it or not, there's a little brunette with a podcast who's got your back. Until next time, beloved. Namaste.